It's December in the Czech Republic, and that can mean only one thing. Snow, and plenty of it. Just a short drive from Prague, I've met up with Owen Beard's More of Service UK, who has organised the event for myself and a team of guns from the UK. We've all braved the cold and the heavy snowfall to partake in what looks like being a truly stunning driven hunt, on a beautiful estate blanketed in white. The snowfall is that heavy and thick on the ground that some have had to park their cars a fair distance away and be brought in on the tractors. We all line up patiently to pick our peg numbers and find out our fate for the two days ahead. But as always with a Service UK driven hunt, there's plenty of banter. So, um, so Owen, you'd have seen the last time we came here, Owen shot a rather large female. It was obviously a female, but he Barren couldn't tell. Sour, very old. Um, so they've drawn a little picture. <laughs> this is a boar, this is a sow. Well, we think so. Got a pyramid. Yeah. Very flat pyramid. So Owen's still slightly confused. He's going to keep pulling the trigger until somebody tells him. 12 years of killing the wrong thing. <laughs> that is until the welcome ceremony begins. Our gracious host, Count Leonard Colorado Mansfield, and his chief gamekeeper, Milan, start with a traditional hunting horn before we get our briefing for the day. Although the majority of which isn't in English, we do get our own translation before we're sent out into the woods. <laughs> Everyone boards the tractors according to their peg number and colour. So we've got our instructions. Uh, there's been plenty of snow, hopefully there's lots of game. Now we're heading off to a high seat, so wish me luck. I find myself perched on the edge of a thick wooded area, with a clear view to my left and right. But not much visibility in front. However, this could work to my advantage, as the game comes moving through in front of me and won't spot me until hopefully it's too late. Wearing my Deer Hunter Rusky Jacket and Trousers in Realtree Extra, I've given myself the best opportunity to stay out of sight. Plus, the high insulation in this extreme weather hunting outfit will keep me warm and dry. I've chosen a simple Blaze Orange Team Realtree hat to remain visible, and then the advanced Realtree Extra camo to remain invisible to the game, which gives me a similar colour to the tree and greenery behind me. As well as having my Realtree Extra, I'm also armed with a Merkel RX Helix in 3006. Topped with a Leica Magnus 1.5 to 10x42 scope and the awesome 185 grain Lapua Mega Ammunition. I'm absolutely sure I've got a winning combination. All I need to do now is wait. The Realtree Extra camo appears to be working perfectly, as immediately in front of me two rodos emerge from the woods. One stands in phase, looking directly at me and doesn't look spooked in the slightest. I'm clearly well hidden against my backdrop. Unfortunately, roe deer are out of season and amongst the list of species we are not permitted to shoot on this hunt. And so, I let them head on by. At least now I know the Realtree Extra is doing its job. The next thing to come through is one of the hard-working beater's dogs that scurry through the thick woodland. Then another beater's dog passes by. Clearly they've picked up the scent of the two deer and are hot on their trail. They move the wild game so it wanders into plain sight and potentially a shooting position. I wait patiently but it's clear that others are having better luck than me. So we've heard plenty of shots so we know there's some game down but we're on back 11 which is right at the end of the drive. Now, we have seen some game. Earlier on we saw a couple of rodos skipped out in front of us. Now they're out of season. One thing that Leonard and Milan, the head keeper, are very clear about is what you are and what you're not allowed to shoot. Uh, rodos, obviously out of season. No large stacks with big crowds on the top. And uh, no white-tailed deer, or Virginia deer as they call them here. So far, we know there's game there. We've seen a little bit, but nothing that's shootable. 
just going to have to be patient. As the snow continues to fall, it isn't long before I'm heading back to the tractor. A rare blank, but we hope for better luck this afternoon. As everyone meets up back where we started, for many it's their favourite part of the day, lunchtime. Local sausage and a cup of coffee is the order of the day, as the team shelters from the snow or warms themselves near the fire. For the afternoon drive I find myself against another wooded backdrop, and again, Realtree Extra seems the perfect choice. Visibility isn't great from this seat, but once again I'm well hidden. It's not long before I see some life as a family of wild pigs trots by. But in this thick woodland there's no clear line of sight. Sometimes you just can't get a shot. The wood here is quite thick. So we've just seen a mature sow go past. Just seen a mature sow go past with a young Kyla, four or five younger pigs, Freischwingers. But there's just too much brush in front. I've got a clear path about 75 yards. They didn't stop, and I can't, I really can't risk a deflection or the bullet uh, fragmenting, hitting brush on the way through. We can only take clear shots. That'll be bad next time. I wait patiently, but silence falls across the woodland, and before I know it, time is up. As happens sometimes, I blanked on both drives today, despite seeing a fair amount of game. However, at least I've got a second day in which to redeem myself. I wonder how the other guys have fared. As the beaters carry the fallen quarry into the tableau, it's pretty clear that quite a few have had better luck than I. I wonder if any of these pigs were the ones that trotted past me. Everyone gathers and recounts their day with a cold beer, and I catch up with some of the other guys from Team England. How did the hunt go today? Uh, well, we had quite a quiet first drive uh, with only two or three pigs, but uh, Rip shot his first young Kyla, which was great. Congratulations. Um, second drive for me um, wasn't that good. It was freezing cold. I didn't see anything, only a couple of roe deer. And then right at the end, just about to pack the gear up, an eight came past me. And um, I've took a shot. 80 metres as they're running away. Um, I've got good blood, but they're just put the uh, just putting the dogs on it now, so hopefully okay. they'll bring it in. So it's not all about you. Come on, guys, who's actually killed something here? Oh. Yeah. yeah. So how'd, how'd you get on? Uh, first of all, there was two row coming through, and then we had about another two uh, hinds come through, mm -hmm. but still can get a shot of them. And then uh, I had four come through, watched them come through the trees very quickly. Mm -hmm. Took it out straight through the spine on top of the head. Oh, fantastic. So textbook, textbook shot. Textbook shot. So if you could just take over to one side when we finished here oh, we'll and just go through later. the basics yeah. with them, that would be great. <laughs> and then you, you're currently king of the hunt. You've shot this beautiful hind stood there behind as well. Yeah, had a nice hind today. Saw a um, young group of piglets come through, but didn't really get a shot at those. Yeah. And, uh, saw a sow that, well, I wasn't 100% sure what it was, so we let that one go. And then the group of hinds came towards you, and you kind of shot them to make sure they went away from me as well. I That's think it, I saw that as well. Yeah, shield my neighbour from any. Uh... <laughs> I was coming on to. I was coming on to the trophy of the day. It's nearly as impressive as a gas bottle that Owen showed me on my Chinese water deer hunt earlier on this year. But uh, the world's greatest robot hunter managed to connect with a tree. Did you call it in with beech leaves? That's the question that everybody hangs on to. No. <laughs> So all in all, a pretty good day. Everybody's smiling, which is, which is really good. As the fire roars and the sun fades, we gather around the tableau for the traditional end of day ceremony. Those that have taken game move into the tableau where their quarry is given its last meal. A mark of respect for the fallen game. Leonard then moves around the tableau, taking a leaf and offering it to the hunter, and shaking the hand in a celebration of the harvest. The Czech Republic has many hunting traditions, one of which is initiation. 
Any hunter who takes her first of any species must lean over the animal and have their backside whacked with a stick, as demonstrated beautifully here by Owen. One gentleman is even given an entire tree rather than just a leaf in a cheeky celebration at his seven kills. That's pretty good shooting. Day two and the snow is thick on the ground again. Everything is white as far as the eye can see. I catch up with Team England as everyone gathers, eager to get out there. We get our orders for the day and we're off on the tractors once again. Through Leonard's beautiful and picturesque woodland. And I have a bit of a surprise when I arrive at my seat. Luckily I've bought my scraper for a situation just like this. But I soon get settled and this seat looks to be a fantastic vantage point. Right in front of me I have a clear line of sight for some way through the ride. If any game is pushed from one side or the other, it has to run across this ride. I'm hoping to see plenty of game, but with such a small window of opportunity, my shooting needs to be good. Very good. I'm sat only minutes before a pile of pigs comes running straight across in front of me. I get off a shot and I'm pretty sure it's hit home, but as they dash past it's difficult to see if the pig has gone straight down or continued into the bush. Another pig dashes across the road beside me. Pigs emerge into the clearing ahead and again I make a good shot, but they disappear into the trees. Pigs dash frantically across the ride, but I hold my fire, waiting for a good shot. Firing aimlessly into the thick stuff speculatively would be dangerous and highly irresponsible. There are beaters and dogs in there. I get off a third shot and once again I'm sure it's a third hit. Another pig. Another good shot. Okay, so that was a pretty exciting drive. Now, it started off fast. Uh, seeing that we'd literally been in the chair for less than two or three minutes and the pig started coming across. Now, to start with, they were nice and steady, but as the drive picked up, they were rocketing through, literally giving us a split second to get a shot off. Now, also, the earlier groups that were coming through had leads out the front and then they got smaller towards the back. But as they got um, decimated, then those trains got smaller, so eventually there's just one big sow with one small piglet behind them, so you've got to pick your shots very carefully. But four down, really happy with that drive, so let's go and see what we've got. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good hunting. Thank you. We made contact just behind the front leg, a uh, third of the way at the body, exactly where I wanted to, to place the shot. Now, he gave me a quartering shot just turned at the last minute, and then I had a perfect opportunity at taking uh, 
a broadside or just just about broadside before we headed into the bush now as you can see he's moved a long way with a 185 grain Lepur Maga smack in the engine room just goes to show how tough and resilient uh, these wild boar are now they've been moved around they haven't been driven uh, this is a pressure hunt so they have been trotting around as you saw he didn't particularly run in fast there's blood all the way down the sides and it was spraying out all over the snow that is a great thing about hunting here in the fresh snow you can see all of the tracks and you can pick up a pretty good blood, blood trail so i'm really pleased with this pig really happy with the performance of the rifle merkel rx helix in 306 like a magnus 1.5 to 10 by 42 and of course the awesome Le Pur Mega 185 grain four pigs four shots one drive it doesn't get any better than this Okay, so what we've done is we've marked up our tags. Now we have to put our number on them to make sure that the Jagmeister knows who, which peg has shot them. As you can see, I've marked up four pegs, four tags. I've got four pigs on the ground, four shots. So now all I need to do is stick these bad boys through the air and we're good to go. A very successful drive for myself, and I head back to base with Team England and catch up on how the day's gone for them. This afternoon I find myself on another high seat, a foot deep in snow. But this time I've got a wonderful view all around me. The game could come from any direction, so I need to be alert, sharp and most definitely on the ball which is easier said than done in the bitter cold. So I've sat in this chair before, although at that time we didn't actually see anything. But we know there's plenty of game out there. We've seen fresh tracks we've driven up here in the back of the tractor. And you never know which way they're gonna go. It all depends on how they react to the beaters. But this fresh snow should keep them moving around a bit. It's almost perfectly silent here. Very, very peaceful and some machinery in the distance, but not a breath of wind, and you can almost hear a pin drop. You've just gotta be patient. Then I see movement. A small fallow doe comes over the brow of the hill and is totally unaware of my presence. I take aim. My first shot hits hard and it's clearly out on its feet. It stumbles forward. I put in a second shot to make sure it hits the ground instantly. So that was a fallow doe. Just saw it feeding up uh, along that ridge there. Uh, a safe backdrop there, I could see the snow behind it. Put the first shot in, might have got a uh, deflection on the grass as it went through. She looked uh, pretty well there, but I put a second shot in anyway, she turned. So you've got to be really careful here, they have white tailed here. And as I saw the fellow come up, I just had to double check. Um, its markings it's still got, even though it's in its winter coat, it still has a stripe down the side. And then as it turned the back, I could see the rump, which has, uh, I it has a white rump with two black stripes that cut into the rump, the white section. So once we've identified her, then there's another one for the back, so. The rest of the drive passes without any sign of game. And it's time to head out of the seat. So we heard plenty of shots on that drive, so I'm pretty confident there's a quite a healthy bag. We only got one shot, uh, nice little fallow doe, just meandered away in front of us. This is the first time I've shot anything in a seat, so it's uh, pretty exciting. But it's really, really flat and calm here. All you can hear is shots echoing all over the forest, but we've still got some work to do. Let's go and find our doe. OK, 
Okay, so here we go. Last tag of the day for number 11. So, that's not bad, five pieces for the day. Four wild boar and uh, this beautiful fallow doe. You can hear the tractor now, it means we're being picked up. So, another phenomenal hunt here in Debris with uh, Service UK. Thanks to Leonard, Colorado Mansfield for allowing us to hunt on the estate again. And hopefully we've helped out with the management of the game here once more. Look forward to coming back again. Beautiful surroundings, great company and phenomenal hunting. Once again, there's a beautiful selection of game on show at the Tableau. All the hunters and beaters gather to admire the day's quarry and take a few pictures. Then we gather for the ceremony and to pay respect to the game. Tune in next week to Realtree Global Hunting to join us on our epic red stag hunt in Scotland as we scale the scenic heights during the rut. Subscribe to Team Wild TV to stay up to date with our adventures on Realtree Global Hunting and the rest of our new show lineup for 2013.